Um, good morning, everyone. As, um, how do I pronounce your name again? Nayana mentioned I'm Paul, and I'm a developer. I develop end-to-end uh, .NET solutions uh, at work. Outside work, I'm involved, I'm volunteer in two awesome organizations, <laughs> Big Data X and DataKind. In DataKind, we use data science to help nonprofits get insights from their data to help the communities uh, better. And at uh, Big Data X, uh, we aim to improve the data engineering literacy here in Singapore and surrounding regions. Hence, we try to organize free workshops and events uh, for this goal. And Last year, I went to Australia. I usually attend conferences because those are the things that make me happy. Uh, I learned about property-based testing from Zach, who's speaking right here, uh, talking about uh, Hypothesis, uh, which is a library on property-based testing. And when I came back to Singapore, of course, I, I delighted about the library, so I shared it with the community here. Uh, I talk about property-based testing with Hypothesis. But Today, I'd like to focus more on, on the essentials, like what really is property-based testing, if you want to dissect it a bit. So I try to define it like a, it's a type of testing that asserts based on properties that describe the relationship between the input and the output of the function that is being tested. Is this clear enough? Yep, exactly. That's why I like examples better. <laughs> so let's take uh, a testing example. Let's try to test a simple multiply function. Uh, for this uh, test function that we have, do you have any comments on the test? Yeah, don't do this. Don't ever do this. <laughs> this is like implementing the, the functionality as part of uh, as your test, right? So if this is not the right way, what other possibly th approaches in testing that we can possibly do? So one of the basic ones is giving examples. So we give an example of the inputs, like two and three, and then we try to put or provide the example output. So here we have two of those examples. Example one, we have this group, and then example two, we have a bunch of inputs and then the corresponding out output, four times five equals 20. And we can choose to refactor it, make it look beautiful, uh, so we have the common uh, logic here. We're still comparing actual output and expected output, uh, but it's nice to have uh, all of our uh, parameters for factors and expected output in one place so we can easily add. So that's, that's still okay. Uh, but what we want to do is, um, is there a way that we can, uh, we can, um, uh, have a way not to depend on the expected output. Can we do a test just by uh, depending on the inputs alone? So I use the multiply function just not just because it's a simple function, but it's also something that reminds me when I was in primary school. So in primary school, uh, we learned about properties. Um, let's say arithmetic properties, right? You have like a, uh, addition uh, properties, you have the multiplication properties. And when we talk about property-based testing, it's really this kind of properties that we're referring to. It's the, the, the attributes and then the characteristics of the function that we're trying to test, right? Not the properties that is like a syntactic sugar for C-sharp or properties that you own. Now, of course, you have like may maybe like bungalows and stuff, but the properties that we're talking about here is something like this. So in mu multiplication properties, you have cumulative property, which uh, you can reorder. It's still going to be ha having the same result. You have associative property, multiplicative property, and distributive property. So how do we apply this to testing? So if you notice here, we got rid of the output now. We're just going to depend on the input data that we have. But using this input data and our knowledge about properties, uh, that's how we're going to improve our approach to testing. So we can do the cumulative part property in this fashion. So we, we just rearrange, and then using the same function that we're testing, it should um, give the same result. So that's the property, and we're trying to test the cumulative property. And so on with the other properties you can do uh, also on, uh, in the same approach. 
But here, if you notice, what we're trying to do is we're, we're now using poverty-based testing. But if you notice, I didn't use any framework yet, right? Why would you use a framework for uh, such an example? Uh, we're still using predetermined inputs. So predetermined inputs, that means I have to set these inputs manually by myself. The thing is, here, for, for the multi, uh, fly, um, multiply function, what is our, the population of our inputs? Can I do the testing in such a way that I can exhaustively test uh, the function? It's quite I impossible, right? Because you have like factors which can have like millions of <laughs> samples, multiply millions and other millions. It's impossible to me to r manually write it down. So is there another way that we can uh, deal with this sort of uh, fashion? If, it's only l if your input is only A to Z, I can just for loop it, right? And then test all the, the, the data. But if your sample uh, input is too big to for you to do exhaustive testing, um, we still want to test, but what you might be able to do is instead of testing using the whole uh, population, why not like test like sample at a time? Like maybe 100 sample, test with that. If it's okay, then try with another randomized sample. So at least we might not test all the population, but at least we're moving there. And hopefully uh, somewhere down the road, maybe some s combination will uh, spawn a bug or something that we'll, we'll uh, be able to learn from, right? So that is using randomized inputs. So in this example, I'm using now uh, the hypothesis for me to be able to generate a random set of integers and uh, another uh, integers for, for the factors, right? And for this, um, it's hypothesis is just giving us like uh, 100 samples at a time. 100, sam 100 samples is the default uh, number size of the uh, sample that hypothesis is giving. So you may ask, why use a library? I can code th the randomized <laughs> uh, inputs by myself, right? Why should I use a li library? Well, there's no, not, nothing is stopping you from creating your own library or function, right, if you want. It's just that why do you need to reinvent the wheel if there are lots of um, uh, libraries that are doing uh, this already? Even if you're using it for another language like Java or C Sharp or F Sharp, uh, why would you... Uh, recreate uh, um, the same uh, library, right? So um, perhaps before you create your own library, maybe you can look into the open source ecosystem and community. Maybe there is a library that's already um, built for property-based testing for your language. And maybe maybe it's not perfect, but you know, we're in a community. Uh, we're here to help each other. If there's something that you notice to improve, maybe you can send a pull request and make uh, the library better and then it will help uh, the rest of the community as well. So apart from randomizing, what else uh, can a library do? So at least for, let's say for hypoth hypothesis, it doesn't give you just r randomized uh, samples alone, but it also allows you to have more elaborate input criteria. So here, apart from integers, let's say you want to um, only include those that are greater than zero, all positive integers. You can do that, or you can do arbitrary uh, conditions. Think of formal methods, right? You can define your um, uh, criteria in such way. And apart from that, uh, remember a while ago we were doing example-based testing. Let's say you have a situation or a, um, a set of inputs that you really want to test, um, but in what you're already doing randomized testing, you can do that also using uh, this property-based testing library. You can have an example. So what it will do, it will run with your example plus the randomized uh, samples as well. So you have like the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> and from here, you don't have to depend on the default uh, value or default size, which is 100. You can increase it uh, to uh, a few hundreds more. And in fact, if you want to do it with uh, continuous integration, you might want to increase it to a lot more because you want the more samples that you test, the more probability, probability that you will be able to catch the bug that you're, you're hunting for. So you might ask, like, property-based testing is really good. Can I use it for everything? Uh, so this is my thought process. 
um, I'm always open to new ideas in case uh, some things change. But currently, this is how I see it. So I usually ask myself when doing testing, is the function that I am testing, uh, does it have testable properties uh, from the inputs that I'm providing it? If there's none, then I just continue with uh, usual example-based testing. But if I can derive a generic property that I can sort of uh, use as a high-level uh, way of testing, then I try to um, approach it in a property-based testing kind of approach. And then after that, I ask myself, can I afford to test all possible inputs to this function? If I can, if the input is maybe just A to Z, then I can just for loop it and then use pre predetermined inputs for that manner. However, if the input is, a uh, combination of inputs are so large that I cannot really test manually, then um, I'll try to leverage on randomized uh, inputs and then test like sample at a time. Now that we have a randomized um, testing, um, I don't want to be manually triggering this, right? You don't want to be manually triggering for bugs. You want it in such a way that uh, you might be sleeping at night, but something is working for you, hunting the bugs for you, so that when you wake up in the morning, if there's a problem or some bugs, you'll be able to like just get a report that, hey, there's something wrong with your function, you should fix this, right? So some you can hire some sort of a system that you don't have to pay for it, it will do the work for you, so why not? So that hence, we have this hunting bugs with CI. We have this normal CI. Uh, you can keep it there. It will do its job. The purpose of that is so that we have early uh, detection of problems. Uh, that is there. That, that's okay. But what we want to add is we want to have another CI pipeline uh, dedicated for our bug hunting. So I call it the bug hunting uh, continuous integration. So the difference here is instead of being triggered by merge and pull requests and so on, I want this to be scheduled. And if the CI uh, platform that I'm using allows me, I want to schedule it as often as possible, maybe every hour or every day if it doesn't uh, allow me. Uh, the purpose is thi for this is for me to hunt bugs. Even if I'm away, I'm sleeping, it will hunt bugs for me. It will try to do those randomized inputs and then probably uh, give me a result with certain combinations. Maybe it fails that system. So let me do some demo. So I have some screenshots, but I'm not going to use this. This is only for backup in case the internet goes off or the electricity has some problems or uh, the world as we know ends. Uh, I can't do much on the other two, but yeah, you know what I mean. So what we have here is a sample uh, for uh, arithmetic, the one that we discussed. So we have the multiply function, and we also have um, a set of property-based tests uh, with randomized uh, inputs, right? So we have random integers and then this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to integrate this using, uh, who uses um, GitHub here? Anyone using GitLab? Which one do you like most? <laughs> I used both <laughs> also. <laughs> so uh, uh, for GitHub, I because it has in nice integration with Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps, by the way, is free. Um, yeah, I don't know why they put Azure there, because usually when people think of Azure, it's the paid version, right? But yeah, I, I, all of my setups are free. Uh, so uh, I tried to let me uh, add a um, simple CI for this. So. Um, in inside Azure DevOps, uh, I can just build a new pipeline. If that clicks, and then f uh, I'll just go to GitHub, and then select my uh, this one, multiply multiplication, because it's done in Python, uh, multiplication gh demo. And then once uh, I have that selected, I'll just need to configure. Uh, and then this one, uh, I'll need to cheat a bit. Uh, I have something configured already. Let me just do this. So what it does, uh, once you have this configured, it's uh, auto ch uh, checking into your uh, GitHub um, repository. So I'm just going to copy this. 
oops and then copy it here so I included the test uh, step here where uh, I use PyTest to test using pr uh, property based testing uh, using hypothesis so that's part of the step and then I'm just going to save and run I'll just commit it to master branch and then once that is done uh, I should be able to see it uh, check into the uh, repository and then once it's checked into the repository I should be able to see the uh, the steps in the CI so it will try to um, pull the necessary uh, files and information the normal CI steps that you usually see um, including the building of the uh, artifacts and then also the, the testing so it's currently preparing uh, uh, for the job to be queued so while waiting uh, why not uh, I can take uh, some questions if there's any questions in the audience for now while we're waiting so it's doing the normal CI CI what CI needs to do CI needs to do <laughs> it's quite fast installing the assemblies so I did the setup uh, both in Azure DevOps I also did it in uh, GitLab so the Git my GitLab setup I'll show you also later so what we're trying to do now is uh, we'll set up the CI first and once the CI is done you don't want to be manually kicking off the CI right so you need to explore whether your um, CI platform has uh, ability to schedule uh, the, s the trigger so I'll show that to you also so it's done um, what I want to show here is uh, it has a step on testing so in the test you should be able to see it's so small so if I scroll down uh, you should be able to see the hypothesis, hypothesis uh, uh, statistics where the first test that we have I'm using 200 um, um, examples the rest are, are just default so you have like uh, hundred passing examples so this is this is fine it's good so once we have uh, this w the next thing that you want to do is to be able to set the schedule so that it will trigger on its own every day or every hour unfortunately I think for Azure uh, DevOps the granularity where it um, uh, allows me to do the scheduling is uh, only I think once per day so it's okay once per day is better than nothing I can just increase the sample to a thousand right so I can test more so I'll just go to the releases oh sorry uh, it should be builds so in the multiplication I'll just uh, edit this and then in the settings you are under settings you have triggers and in the triggers you should be able to see uh, setting for schedule here scheduled so I'll just add a schedule um, it uh, allows you to do scheduling every day and then the thing that I want to uncheck here is only scheduled builds if their source or pipeline is changed we don't care if there's a change in the source code for this approach for, for hunting for bug hunting CI so I'm going to uh, uncheck that and then let's say every 2 a.m. in the morning while I'm sleeping someone or something is uh, doing the job for me in hunting bugs so I'm just going to save this save and queue so it will save it on its own um, for GitLab um, it has this similar functionality you can set up your CI also but the, th the thing with um, GitLab is instead of allowing you to just uh, do it like once per day it allows you to do uh, every hour <laughs> so if you notice here once I set it up this is GitLab by the way um, it's building and hunting bugs for me every like every hour so you can set it up so I mean it's a it's choice whether it's your your hosting currently in GitHub or GitLab and these are free public repos so I'll, I'll run if I want to uh, go to my builds this is where I can monitor the 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 results of the builds as well so in this uh, multiplication GH demo uh, every uh, build 
result you can see from here. The ones that I saw showed to you about the how does the test result, right? So if, if something fails, uh, you should be able to see it here failing as well. And then let's say hypothesis found that for this combination, your function failed. And then you go and, and fix the bug. So with that, uh, let me um, bring it into a summary. So what we've done so far is we've tried to explore on various ways of testing a function. Uh, we've tried with a basic example uh, by providing example outputs. After that, we refactored and then tried to do it in a parameterized way. And then we explored like at least two uh, approaches in property-based testing using uh, predetermined inputs and then the randomized inputs if we're not able to exhaustively test uh, using all of the um, possible inputs to the, your function. Yeah. And then we also explored uh, the bug hunting CI pipeline, where it's a pipeline that is separate to your normal pipeline. Let your normal pipeline do its thing. But we use this pipeline to help us hunt uh, bugs if there's any uh, bugs with those certain combination of inputs. Um, you can reach me here. Uh, that's my Twitter and uh, GitHub handle. And I've shared the links here for the previous hypothesis demo if you want to dig more into the hypothesis uh, property-based testing framework, as well as the, the demos that I uh, uh, used a while ago. And that's it for me. Thanks. Uh, OK, I think we have time for one question. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can give the mic. Hello. Yes. Uh, can you give give a, <coughs> a real example of property based? Because just now, I mean, like in multiplication, as it seems that yeah. your test doesn't really catch the bug where it's overflow. If let's say integer overflow or something. Because you test commutative and all this, you might not yeah. catch it, right? Th th that's true. So apart from randomized testing, there's also this uh, approach called fast testing. Usually fast testing is usually you have like randomized inputs, and then your goal there is try to do as much input so that it breaks the system. That is another type of testing. But for property-based testing, you're thinking of a predetermined or deterministic uh, result uh, where you want to test that once you have this result, it, it uh, coincides with the property uh, of the function that you're uh, trying to uh, test for. So um, what I'm sharing here is property-based testing, is it won't replace all the testing that we've done so far. So you still have your example base, you still have your fast testing for that purpose. Plus, uh, now we have another approach called property-based testing, which we can add in our suite of uh, kind of tests that we apply to the functions that we do. So other examples are probably for this uh, is just like multiplication, right? But uh, other popular examples for property-based testing is, let's say, if you have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a, a, a list, right? You, you want to reverse a list. So one property there is um, if you reverse the list twice, it should be the same uh, list that you input uh, from the previous. So if you, if you order like uh, one, two, three, I reverse it, this is three to one. Uh, I reverse it again, it should come out as one, two, three. So the input, and then the, if I reverse twice, it should be equal. And then, of course, there are like few other uh, approaches. Like if you notice, there's this diamond kata, um, where it also teaches you on like uh, how to like spot properties from the inputs and outputs. Usually, you try to look uh, the input to the system, and then output, and try to uh, check whether are there are properties. The one that you've uh, shared, uh, because people uh, are also sharing that, hey, um, overflow is also a property <laughs> or something. But um, it, it might be a case to case. I would categorize that maybe more appropriate for fast testing if that's the goal for that. But for property, I want to have like a, a deterministic uh, expectation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Paul. Uh, please uh, give him a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Uh,